Back in 1985, Subaru introduced a new two-door sports coupe that was vastly different from anything they'd ever offered before. Known as the XT in North America and Europe, and later offering the more powerful XT6, these were the first cars from Subaru that weren't practical compacts, wagons, or trucks. This is the story of the Subaru XT and XT6. This is my old car. I thought we agreed you'd buy a Subaru. But Dad, I did. The new Subaru. Thanks for the many suggestions for reviewing the XT and XT6. Their successor, the Subaru SVX, has also been requested and I hope to feature that one in a future episode. Prior to 1985, in America, Subaru was mostly known for their compact cars, starting with their first U.S. import, the extremely compact Subaru 360 model, in 1968. In 1975, they introduced the Subaru 4WD Wagon, the first on-demand four-wheel drive car sold in America. And by 1983, Subaru had sold a million cars in the U.S. Yet despite this, they had yet to introduce a car to compete against sporty coupes like the Honda Prelude or the Toyota Celica. In 1985, Subaru's first entry into the sports car market took the 80s boxy styling trend to a whole new level. Called the XT in North America and Europe, it was sold as the Alcyone in Japan, which is the name of the brightest star in the Pleiades star cluster, which fits the theme of Subaru's logo. And in Australia and New Zealand, it was sold as the Vortex. Subaru's parent company back then, Fuji Heavy Industries, or FHI, also manufactured aircraft, which likely helped contribute to the many airplane design cues throughout the car. Looks like an airplane. Well, wait. Of course, the pop-up headlamps didn't necessarily fit the airplane theme. They were just a prerequisite for any 80s sports car wannabe. But the car's wedge-like shape was very efficient in slicing through the wind, much like an airplane, having a drag coefficient lower than any other car offered in America at that time. Other features intended to improve aerodynamics was a single 22-inch windshield wiper, which tucked under the hood when not in use. And also there were flush door handles, which required the lower portion of the handle to be pushed in to allow the upper portion to pop up and release the door. Like many of the quirky features of this car, these trick door handles may have looked like a gimmick, but it likely aided airflow since there was no opening under the handle. The interior of the XT continued its airplane theme with the driver sitting in what almost looked like an airplane cockpit with its joystick style shifter and controls clustered in pods on either side of the steering wheel that moved with the wheel when its position was adjusted. And then there's the steering wheel itself, quite possibly the oddest looking one on any car. Those who obsess with symmetry in their cars likely hated this. If your car was above the base model, you also got a digital dashboard display that looked just like an arcade video game, complete with graphics that resembled an airplane runway. Base models had simpler analog displays and even were missing the rear seat, although considering the rear seat size, most adults couldn't fit in it anyway. The XT's aerodynamic shape certainly didn't hurt the car's performance but it couldn't overcome the car's small engine options, which were somewhat weak for a car that clearly was trying to look fast. Between 1985 and 1987, XTs were offered with one of two four-cylinder engines, both displacing 1.8 liters. The naturally aspirated unit in the base model had 97 horsepower, or you could get a turbo in higher-end models with 112 horsepower. Although in Europe, the turbo had 134 horsepower, with a non-turbo not even available there. To fit the engine under the XT's low raked hood, it was a flat 4, also known as an H4, since the cylinders and crankshaft are positioned like a letter H, and move horizontally as opposed to a more upright cylinder position in a conventional inline 4. In addition to manual and automatic transmissions, you could also get the XT with either front wheel drive or part time four wheel drive, which could be switched on via a red button on the top of the shifter. But to get four wheel drive, you also had to get the turbo model. Also available was another rare feature for the time, adjustable air suspension, to give the car a bit more ground clearance when in four-wheel drive mode. I doubt many people ever took the XT off-road, but you certainly could try. By 1988, the turbo four-cylinder was replaced with a naturally aspirated 2.7-liter flat six, which increased the horsepower to 145. If your car had the flat six, its name was changed to the XT6, with new bright XT6 decals on the doors to clearly identify it. Although in Japan, it maintained the Alcyone name, specifically the Alcyone VX. The XT6 had another rare feature for the time, 
an adaptive steering system that changed the level of power steering assistance based on the car's speed, which unfortunately required use of a special hydraulic fluid that differed from typical power steering fluid, so anyone who still has the car today likely pays a significantly higher cost to replace it. One feature from the Turbo 4 that did not carry forward to the flat 6 was the arcade-style digital display. Since this display was never available on the base model, the XT6 killed the airplane landing strip graphics for good. The digital gimmicks of yore are gone. It's analog now. Thank you, Subaru. Despite the improved performance of the XT6 model, both the XT6 and the XT continued to lose sales in 1988 and 89. And although there were 1990 and 91 models, sales by then had dropped to less than 2,000 per year. Many people back then probably never knew the car existed, as even the flat six didn't bring it up to the same sports car level other Japanese automakers had achieved. Total sales across its seven model year run was just under 100,000, with only around 8,000 of those being in Japan. The fact that the flat six's displacement was over two liters didn't help, due to higher taxes the Japanese government required back then on cars displacing more than two liters. Although you may not have seen it on the road very much, you may have seen the XT6 in the 1988 movie Big with Tom Hanks, near the very end of the movie when Susan has to let Josh return to his former life as a 12 year old. Yes, it's also the saddest part of the movie, so really, how many of you even notice the car anyway? Nowadays, if you hear the name XT6, it is much more likely the reference is to the Cadillac XT6, which launched in 2019. Although it is Cadillac's largest crossover, it is definitely not their smallest vehicle. The end of the XT and XT6 wasn't the end of Subaru in the sports car market, as their successor was the even more wild SVX. This car was so quirky and weird, and ultimately a market failure, that you rarely see one today. So I will likely do a future video on it, meaning I won't go into too much detail about it here. However, just a year after the XVX was launched, Subaru introduced America to the Impreza, a four-door sedan or five-door hatchback, which offered a high-performance trim package called the WRX which was short for World Rally Experimental. The WRX took a much different approach than the SVX, with the marketing of the WRX focusing on its dominance in off-road rally racing. The WRX trim level eventually grew in popularity enough by 2014 to become its own model line separate from the Impreza. The XT and XT6 are rare cars to find these days, as many buyers in the 80s were clearly not impressed with its radical styling and what may have seemed like a lot of gadgets and gizmos. Those who have held onto these cars are likely dealing with parts increasingly difficult to find, with so many being unique to this car. But it is definitely a car that can grab your attention just as well today as it did over 30 years ago. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time.